Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations and we've got a different kind of craft today. And again, I'm experimenting. So um, we're kind of combining things here. I feel, I, you know what? I'm going back to the scarf stash. So if you saw um, the other video where I explained that uh, my sister dropped off tons of her old scarves and I made a chicken out of them, I've pulled two more of the scarves out of the stash. I have another craft in mind as well. So we're seeing those scarves in a lot of things, but it gives you a lot of ideas of things that you can do with some of those leftovers. Um, I need that in a second, so I just don't need it right in my head. <laughs> Um, the other thing was I had just been gifted with some of this cotton um, upholstery cording, upholstery cording or trim or whatever, you know, like the piping, the piping cording. So I want to use some of that. Um, but before we jump over to there so that I can get this drying, we're going to be doing some stuff with toilet paper because I need components and I need this to get dry. So um, we're going to get this going first and I'm going to pull you in overhead so you can see what I'm up to with this. But before we do that, I just need to make up a mixture. And what we're going to do is we're taking water and we're taking white school glue and we're just going to mix a whack of this together. Now I get this from the dollar store, so um, you know whether I use it all or not, it really wasn't an expensive proposition. But I want to get this well mixed because we're going to be using that. Now you could take your Mod Podge and just dilute it a little bit, um, so that would work too. But I wanted to. I wanted to show you an alternative. So not everything has to be purchased, not everything has to be new, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So let me switch you overhead and then we can get rolling on this part. Okay, to get started with this, I've laid down just a layer of plastic wrap and I have toilet paper. So any brand, any brand works, whatever you got. Let me just get a bunch kind of torn off here. So what we want to do is create some panels. And because I don't know the exact size of these, then I am just going to be making them and then we can cut them down to size afterward. So I think I need a bigger paintbrush or I'll be there all day with this. So I'm taking my glue mixture and I am just going to paint this over all of my toilet paper. Get it nice and absorbent, absorbed. This is very thick toilet paper. This is taking more glue than usual. If you have, if you're, if you've got really thin toilet paper, who knew that I had the the high test here? All right. Now because I'm paint, I'm painting it down onto um, my plastic wrap. I'm going to be able to lift this off easily once it's dry. But in essence, what I want to do is keep layering this just on top of itself so that I've got a nice kind of thickish layer to be able to work with. And I want it to be strong enough to kind of stand on its own. So we're just going to continue to build up layers until we've got, you know, this is maybe what, three in some spots. So I wanna get more up here as well. And I'm thinking maybe about at least six, maybe a little bit more. Okay, 
Now that I have some here, what I want to do is kind of impress some patterns. Now I have a couple of these little um, plastic sheets. These are probably embossing sheets that some people have like that go through that roller. I, I don't have an embossing um, machine, so I don't actually know why I have these, but I have them. So I'm just going to lay them in and can you see the pattern forming? You can also take, you can also take stamps and just kind of, well, okay, that's not working too well because he's not too defined. Let me try it. Okay, this is better because it goes into the shape. This one, see how it's too flat? That's just not gonna work. Oh, I could get a leaf though. My leaf would maybe work. Awesome. And uh, let's just put a couple scallops in there too. Because I really don't know exactly what pieces of this I will end up using. So this, we're just gonna leave to dry, those flat pieces. The other piece that I'm going to do is, let me do this over here and shift you guys just slightly over so you can kind of see. All right, sorry, I'm doing this as we're going. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm thinking, I'd kind of like that dragonfly. So I'm gonna take pieces of my toilet paper and I am going to put it down into my mold. And I'm gonna keep layering this up with my glue mixture, making sure that it's kind of in the shape. So I'm going around all of those um, raised micro rims. This is my IOD Dewdrop Pond mold. Okay, stay in there. And I'm gonna let this dry in here. So I'm just gonna keep going until I kind of fill this up. Now, I could, of course, like you're probably going, why don't you just use clay? Because clay really isn't going to work for this particular project. You'll know as we go, but ultimately we're kind of building a wall hanging and we're not going to have the structure to it to be able to use something as heavy as a resin cast of this or, you know, molding it in the clay. So we're going with an alternative. And I'm not sure if or how I'm gonna use this, but I don't want to get to the, other pro the rest of the project and discover, oh, I did want it. And um, as long as I'm doing this gluing, I might as well get some extra pieces done. And if I use them for this project, perfect. And if I use them for a different project, perfect. So I'm gonna do a couple more sheets just in case, and uh, we'll get um, my dragonfly made. I'm not sure that I need any of these other critters, but you know, maybe the fern, I don't know. For this section, I anticipate that maybe I might want some uh, paper, some watercolor paper as part of my, in essence, it's kind of like a wall hanging collage. So I might need this as a bit of background. So all I'm looking at doing is wetting some watercolor pieces and I cut these down so that they're not too big. And I'm just getting them wet. I'm getting some water on here. I don't need to do a particular pattern. I don't need it to be edge to edge, but I do want to use maybe kind of like those greens and, and blues that are part of our cloths. So I'm just taking my watercolor palette here. I think it goes this way and I can't remember what colors are what. So we're just going to we're just gonna do whatever. And I just want to put some watercolor 
on here and just let it do its thing. I, I'm just gonna let it bloom. And that might be enough of that color. I'm gonna get a bit of green. So I'm just gonna add some colors on here, let them bloom, add a little bit more water if I need to. <coughs> Excuse me, and let them dry. So I'm just getting all the wet stuff done so everything can dry overnight. And tomorrow is when we would begin to try and build and, and some of our pieces. I'm building up to tomorrow because it involves sewing. And y'all, if you followed me, know I'm not really a sewer. So tomorrow, I'm really faking it. These are our little paper components. And they've had overnight to dry. I kind of flipped these ones out onto um, just a mesh screen. They're kind of warped, but it's going to work okay for our project. Um, but at this point now, I just want to add some color to them. And I'm not looking for it to be... Let me move the watercolors a little closer here. Um, I'm not looking to paint it in a way that it is in any way exact. But you can see that our paper is still wet enough that it just soaks up that paint, right? It's just pulling it in. And all I want is to be able to get some of the, the looks of, you know what? Like some of the watercolors that we did. So I'm just kind of adding in some of the same colors here and there. I may follow some of the patterns, get some more water on there so it flows a little bit more, but it's nothing, it's nothing more than just getting a bit of pattern happening here. And you know what, I can kind of dry brush right here. We've got some of those, those ripples. So I can dry brush to get some of those patterns showing up. Just play with it, get a bit of color on it. That's all that we're looking to do. It is just about time to break out the sewing machine. And I have to tell you, that just instills fear <laughs> into my heart. I don't know why I ever think of, gee, I need to do this sewing craft because I really am not good at sewing. And uh, just even trying to figure out how to wind the bobbin <laughs> and get more thread on it is just kind of like threatening to me. So... Um, it's good to push ourselves, and I don't think I need to be perfect at sewing. I'm still working out certain aspects of this project in my head, and sometimes I question my thinking. Like, like why do I do this? Um, however, that said, we definitely know if this turns out and looks semi-cool, then anybody can do it. <laughs> because because I did. Um, I was just laying out my piping cords and uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna have four across and I may end up doing the same down. And why am I making this so big? I don't know. Why? why would... Well, you know what? Just go for it. So I'm gonna have, um, lengthwise, they're gonna be 21 inches. Widthwise, they're going to be 18. I'm not sure about the cross ones, if I'm gonna have three or I'm gonna have four. I think it will be easier to tell once I actually break down and cut the cords. So let me do that and, um, then I'll get this laid out and, and I'll tell you my thinking and where we're going with this because you may need a roadmap <laughs> because it's a little different. I ended up cutting 
the long pieces, the height, 22 inches, and the cross piece is 18. And I think I just need four vertical, three horizontal, and that'll be okay. So, fish. Okay, now we get into the sewing. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this scarf and I'm gonna cut a long strip the length of it. So I'm gonna cut a couple of those um, and I'm gonna do the same to this one, which will be my cross pieces. And then I'll come back after I've got those pieces cut because then we have to start sewing these pieces. Okay, suck it up, Cindy. Let's go. What I wanted to show you is all that I am doing is I am now taking my fabric and wrapping it tightly around that piping. Now, this particular fabric has a good side and a bad side. So I'm making sure that the good side is out. And then as I get that going, I am, my pressure foot is up the entire time. There, this is so fat. But you can see that it's kind of flattening it out because I'm kind of going roughly down the center with a zigzag stitch. And I am in essence just sewing the fabric onto this. So I'm just wrapping it around, pulling it kind of tight so this becomes much firmer than it was just loose like this and we'll take it right to the end. I'll cut off this piece. I figured that I would have leftover from each, so I cut, I have four of these long strands. These are the vertical ones, but I cut three long pieces because of the length of my scarf. So the fourth one, I will sew together with just the pieces from the three. And then I will do the same with my little strips for my three cross pieces. And, uh, then we'll reconvene. <laughs> All right, these are my four strips and these are my three small strips. And what I'm looking to do is just kind of roughly put these in across here. Now, I don't think my sewing machine is going to sew down through those. I wonder if I should weave them. Maybe, maybe that might add a little, little something extra. Oops, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, okay, as much as I don't like machine sewing, I hate hand sewing even more. And yet, here I go. So I am going to just take it up an upholstery needle and um, some, some uh, cording and try. I'm just thinking this might be a little bit more durable, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm just going to kind of tack stitch those in place so that they're kind of roughly taken care of. I'm not gonna sew them super tight because I might still wanna be able to tuck some of my things under the edges. Oh yeah, as I do that, as I, as, as I say that, maybe that's why I don't wanna weave them. Okay, I'm not weaving anymore. <laughs> because I want a flat back for my other segments of things. All right. So I'm gonna tack these in place and then I'll come back and start showing you kind of what I'm thinking. And here's the deal on this. It does not matter if these are all uh, perfectly even squares. I just want them to be kind of big enough. Mm, okay, just looking. Um, I just want them to be enough that uh, 
I've got some space in the squares. If I have to cut off the tops and bottoms, I'm cool with that. Okay? All right. I'm going to hand sew, and, and it's best you're not listening. So if I'm crying because of it, you can't tell. For this stage of the project, what we need to do is start laying out some elements. So I'm looking at incorporating some of the watercolor, perhaps, um, maybe pieces of the toilet paper molds that we did. I have little old scraps of, these were um, Christmas trees. So little pieces of my drop cloth that's painted on, some other scarves, and we're looking at attaching them. It means that for some things, like if I put this one in, I could sew that segment on. I could use the sewing machine. There's gonna be some segments that maybe I can't. Maybe I have to sew it by hand. Um, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, that, uh, you know, I might want elements traveling up. So kind of disappears in behind here and then comes up in in here maybe for a whole panel and then is done so now we're just kind of filling in squares we're taking the different mediums that we have and we're starting to use them either in their entirety rip them apart do pieces of it <sighs> and and that's that's where I'm at right now. So I think the only thing I've decided is I'm gonna sew this piece onto here <laughs> with the sewing machine and kind of start going from there. It's uh, little bits and pieces and seeing how it all fits and works together. Here I'm just showing you that for some of the fabric pieces, I was able to use the sewing machine in order to be able to attach them, but the paper was way too thick and too awkward. So I actually had to hand tack everything in place. And you can kind of see what it looks like with some of that happening. Well, this one was a different one for me. And I think what, I think what's special about sometimes some of these these oddball crafts is that they're spurred by an unexpected element. So meaning this, I was gifted that bag of scarves, like dress scarves, not winter scarves. And it pushed me out of my comfort zone and into coming up with some different ideas. What can I do with these scarves? So the first thing that I made was the chicken. So I'll post a link if you missed the chicken. Um, and then the next thing out of the scarves was a mixed media wall hanging. And I've never made a wall hanging before. So, well, I never made a chicken before either. So there you go. But with this, we were definitely uh, mixing medias. We had made some textured toilet paper stamped paper and that we had kind of roughly painted out. We had done some watercolor paintings, not of anything in particular, but you know, of kind of the, the main colors from our piece. Um, and we've got the, um, the other gift that I had, which was the cotton um, piping stuff, stuff, <laughs> the cotton piping I think is sufficient. Um, and we fabric covered those with, you know, I'll take some pics against a white background so you can see better, but it's kind of interesting. You know, I sewed, I, I tack sewed the two longest here and I cut off the other two ends um, and I deliberately left some of the holes empty. 
I kind of went out to the sides with some of the fabric to balance it off. So we incorporated some of the uh, scarf fabric in there, um, you know, in a couple of places so that we've got it loose. We've got our watercolor pictures. We've got our toilet paper papers in a number of spots. I actually even added, I sewed on our little toilet paper dragonfly. Um, definitely different, definitely out there. You know, kind of the, the thought of, I think this one's driving me nuts. I feel compelled to have to cut that part off, but I don't necessarily want them to be even. It's just my brain saying that one looks weird. This one, I'm okay with that being a little bit shorter and kind of coming down here. Just this one and maybe this one as I'm looking at them. So when I take the pick, if they're shorter, that's why it was bugging me. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. Let me know if it's something that you would ever try. Let me know if it's something you would have thought of looking at your scarves. I bet you start looking at your scarves differently. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.